are the most important design requirements for today's home appliances? That they work? Yes, absolutely. That they are quiet? No one likes any kind of loud appliance anymore. That they are energy efficient? Now we're talking. Long gone are the days of mechanical buttons and knobs in our home appliances. Today's modern appliances require a variety of different modes, voltages, and motors. Keeping all of those considerations in mind, energy efficiency must reign supreme. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. In this episode, Silvestro Fimiani from Power Integrations joins me to discuss how you can improve the efficiency of your appliance and smart home design power supplies with Power Integrations InnoSwitch 3 with FluxLink and PowiGAN. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Power Integrations. Hi, Silvestro. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi. Okay, so we're talking about improving efficiency in smart home power supplies and appliances today. But before we get started, Silvestro, can you set the stage for us? Is it just me or are we seeing a lot more appliances now than ever before? Yeah, in particular in this last two years after COVID, there was a huge request for appliance that uh, probably one year ago was even difficult to find a microwave here in the U.S., but there is an historical trend. In the last 20 years, the major appliances like washing machine, dryer, dishwasher, they have increased two times in terms of volume in this 20 years. And this reflects the fact that the middle class worldwide is increasing in number. And, and even more, for example, happen for air conditioning with the global warming. Now we have five times more air conditioning that we sell every year than 20 years ago. These are definitely not your grandmother's appliances, right? We're looking at a lot more features today. Yeah, there is all these uh, new features that uh, uh, are populating appliances from uh, Wi-Fi and uh, display, LED light. Uh, everything became uh, nice and shining. And fortunately, this stuff uh, consumes power and you need the very efficient uh, power supply there to try to mitigate the consume of power. Silvestro, how are appliances regulated? I know about Energy Star here in the United States, but what about the rest of the world? Yeah, the rest of the world, also they are take care of this because they are seriously worried about the usage of energy of all these appliances. In particular, in Europe, they have all this ERP regulation that don't only take care of the global efficiency of appliance, but also in the standby. Because most of the case, for example, you have a washing machine, you run the washing machine, you live there. And uh, every time you live there, there is power that you use and uh, is waste. So you won't try to limit it. And it's not just the uh, U.S. Even China, they have put regulation for microwave to stay below one watt uh, in standby. There is Korea, Australia, all worldwide. They are taking serious consideration the problem of appliance. Silvestro, let's talk specifically about power supplies for these appliances. What does power integrations offer in this arena? In this arena, historically, power integration, we have offered a lot of family that cover appliances. In particular, the most popular family for appliances are the Tiny Switch, Tiny Switch 4, and that cover up to 20 watt. It's a simple product, on off, very easy to design, 132 kilohertz. It's able to use very small transformer. And uh, you have a, a no load below 30 milliwatt, very, very efficient. It's available even in SO8 package, so you can build very small board that fit in any appliance. And after we have uh, our uh, large device, the top JX, that can cover up to 200 watt. This is a multi-mode PWM controller. You can select both 66 or 132 kilohertz, depend on... Uh, transformer size, efficient uh, trade-off. You have a bunch of protection of the future, like a line of V, line UV, and this uh, user programmable. You can have latch, uh, hysterical, they have a lot, a lot of features, and they have a very 
proprietary package that allow very good thermal exchange that is important for appliance because most of these appliances they work at temperature ambient like 85 degrees. So this is uh, what is now the situation with uh, what we offer in the market now. But of course, there is something new that is taken for appliance uh, for the next generation. And the next generation that is already there and is entering in, in the appliance world is uh, basically two great technology that we have introduced uh, in recent years. Uh, one is the flux link, that is the basic uh, algorithm, uh, the basic communication for Reno Switch 3 family. The other uh, important uh, technology that we bring to the market is the power, uh, the gun. This is this new material that allows to have a very efficient power supply. Excellent. So let's talk more about these new exciting solutions coming. Can you give me some details about them? Yeah, for example, the, you know, the latest of the InnoSwitch family, InnoSwitch 3, is the InnoSwitch 3 TN. This is a target essentially for low power appliance like washing machine, dryer, low end refrigerator. And this cover a power in the range of uh, below 16 watt universal. High line for Europe, it can go up to 20 watt. The most important, he based on the same technology of InnoSwitch. You have an Opto, not TL451, very, very simple circuit. And uh, he is able to do 87% efficiency, a full load across the line. But most important, that 10% load is able to do 75% efficiency. That is very important to meet the ERP regulation. And uh, amazing, he is able, in case of no load, when you have this device that don't work, there is nothing that uh, asks power, he is able to go of below 5 milliwatts that we consider uh, zero no load. Basically, we round uh, everything that is below 4.5 milliwatt like zero. And this is one of, uh, it's amazing because he continue to keep the very fast transient, all the performance of a standard power supply. We have had in the past uh, device able to do 5 milliwatt no load, but uh, there was uh, some compromise with the uh, transient performance that now is not more there. Now work like a regular power supply and is able to make below 5 milliwatt uh, no load. You have a, a new package, very compact for this small size PCB. You have a very accurate output control. You can reach plus minus 3% across line loader regulation. You can even control the maximum power that delivered to meet UL regulation. You can work isolate and non-isolate. Basically, it's a real uh, the device that any appliance guy is waiting uh, to improve efficiency, uh, simplify the circuit, uh, and cover all up to 20 watt. So I know in the case of power supplies that lower RDS on and switching loss are really important aspects of these designs. So what does the PowiGAN offer us in this case? This is very important because in particular for high power, in particular for this new appliance like a refrigerator, where you have LED light, you have ice maker that require DC motor, or even for appliance high end where there is a bunch of DC motor, low voltage motor there, you need extremely high efficiency, you need something like five, six amps. So it's extremely important to have very high efficiency with the device, thanks to the extremely low RDS on that you can reach, the extremely low switching losses, you are able to reach now efficiency in the range of 95%. So it's a real a step ahead that was unimaginable in the, in the past. A real and most important, the combination of our technology of a power gun and the technology of InnoSwitch with the proprietary algorithm to work the power supply, the chip is able to reach very high efficiency, even a very light load. This is very important, for example, in, a, in the refrigerator. A refrigerator, when all the lights are on, when the ice maker is on, you need maybe 50, 60 watt. But when you close the door of the refrigerator, and this is 95% of the time, and probably he consume only three wood. If the efficiency there at that level is 10%, you dissipate a lot of power that you don't want in 
refrigerator. So it's extremely important to have these flat efficiency that we see in the combination of a power gun and no switch. Okay, so Silvestro, what about power efficiency? What do the GAN switch and in a switch buy me as an engineer here? Something that explains very clear what GAN does is the comparison of a traditional flyback. You can compare a traditional flyback with the diode output, conventional silicon, and you can see that you need a lot of heating there, a lot of metal, a lot of aluminum, very large PCB. In GAN, you absolutely eliminate this. These heatsinks are terrible for appliance because generally you have the vibration, you have uh, appliances that move around worldwide when there are transportation, and uh, you don't want this stuff because this, of course, can create a problem of reliability. With GAN, you have absolutely no worry about this. You have absolutely no heatsink. Very simple board, no heatsink, clean to do. Another important stuff that GAN gives you is the fact that now people want, in particular our customers, they want the design worldwide. They don't want to design a power supply for US, a power supply for Europe and other. In particular, there is a the big problem of India and other countries where the line is not stable. So you need to have something that is able to in case there is a short between line to line, the power supply should survive. This is solved, for example, using 900 volt MOSFET for India, 725 volts MOSFET for the other country, and maybe 650 volts for the US, where you have 110 volts input only. But with the gun, he is able to sustain much higher voltage for a long period of time. So basically you can have a single power supply gun that cover from US to India is a worldwide solution. You don't need any more multiple power supply for each region. One design fit all. So Silvestro, when it comes to appliances, we need to talk about motor drives as well, right? So what kind of requirements should we be considering here? So far, we have all talked about auxiliary power supply, you know, the stuff that you need to power up the display, to drive a small motor DC, or uh, to drive relay inside of the appliance. But most important in this appliance is all uh, these motors that are 300, 400 watt, that uh, for reason of noise, you want to go brushless. You don't want to go with the brush DC. Because but no one enjoys have a washing machine that make a bunch of noise in your house. So there is a huge proliferation of these motors that are brushless for two main reasons. One, we have already mentioned the noise. The second one is the efficiency. The brushless motors are very, very efficient. And for the same reason, everyone in China or worldwide, they are trying to put regulation to improve efficiency on this motor. In particular, European Union, they want to try to save $20 billion by 2035 with this new motor, a new way to drive. And the same in China, they have a new standard for air conditioner to increase efficiency. So this motor in the range of 200, 400 watt that you can drive a fan, you can drive a refrigerator, became more popular in the world. So we have a think about a solution also for this case. The product that we are proposing is called Bridge Switch because it's a bridge that drives the brushless motor. It can go from a power from up to 400 watt and it can reach, because it works essentially high voltage, it can reach 99% efficiency with no heatsink. It's a self-drive. You don't need external power supply to drive the chip. You have hardware-based protection and they have a lot of fault and monitor to be sure that cast that the solution is very reliable in the market and uh, he can support motor from 1 amp to 11 amp it's very flexible because uh, every single ic contain only just uh, one part of the bridge just one arm of a bridge so you can have uh, three of these ic to have the full bridge and you have a three-phase motor or you can have two of these devices and you can drive the single-phase motor. And you can both with the sensor or, or without the sensor. 
It's very, very simple to use for each face. You have this device and you have a bus that communicate with your micro that give all the condition uh, if there is an over temperature, if there is a, a short circuit to a te- there is an over voltage. He communicate all this information to the micro so the design can monitor each of these chip, what's going on and act by consequence so this avoid any situation that could fail the device, fail the system, because you monitor constantly the situation there. So, Silvestro, earlier you mentioned we'd be talking about smart home appliances as well. So in this domain, standby power is also a really important aspect to consider, right? Yeah, this is even more important of appliance, because generally in appliance, you can have four or five appliances uh, maybe in a house. Now with this IoT, you can have uh, tens of these devices. In particular, for example, imagine uh, the smart uh, outlet where you can uh, drive from your cell phone on, off, no? All these devices, they consume power, so it became more and more important uh, even then appliance, the standby in particular, because this device, like imagine the outlet in the wall that is automatically drive by your cell phone, it stay there for hour, hour, and maybe it work only for a few hours a day. So everything you dissipate in the wall is, is waste of energy. So everyone is working on this to try to minimize the no load. In particular, for example, There is all this new regulation also for this type of device uh, to improve uh, this, uh, reduce at the minimum the standby consumption, at the minimum the no load. And in particular, you have all this talking of uh, intelligent power strip, this stuff. Most of these, they have a relay that turn off and turn on the power. So to power a relay, you need uh, a zero cross generally circuit there. This zero cross uh, to detect the voltage, uh, they consume a lot of power when and continue to stay there because they need always to sense the line. For this reason, this is just an example of device that uh, real dedicated to this application. Just to give an example, our PI is concentrated to try to take down any waste of energy in any application. This is the case, for example, of Zero Cross. We have this, this family called Link Switch TNZ that is able to detect the line without consume a lot of power. Basically, in a flyback or back, you can have only 20 milliwatt no load power consumption. So to give you an idea, the previous solution was something like 200, 300, 500 milliwatt. If you use a conventional approach with this device, you got 20 milliwatt, so you reduce by a factor 10 the dissipation. And it's very, very simple, just a couple of uh, standard devices to the traditional back, and you can have uh, a solution for relay for all these IoT that operate with, with relay. So you have all these uh, two wire dimmers, switcher, occupancy sensor, AC line detector, all this stuff, home appliance, of course. So you eliminate a bunch of external circuits that are very dissipative, and they give you exactly the signal when the line crosses zero, you can safely power up your relay. You can see that this is the power consumption at no load. And you see that in the US, where you have 110 volts, you dissipate below 10 milliwatt in this case at no load. And in Europe, you are in the range of 11. So it's a real great solution that reduced probably by a factor 10 or 20, the previous uh, solution. This is what we are doing uh, for appliance. We believe that uh, efficiency is the most important factor now that uh, appliance became a pervasive and any, anyone is looking uh, to don't waste energy for appliance. Uh, and we believe that we have the best solution with these two great technology, the FlexLink InnoSwitch 3, and the gun put together, we can have in the range of 90% efficiency in the range of 20 watt, and even 95% efficiency of full load for power in the range of 60, 100 watt. And this thanks to the synchronous ratification, Inno3 algorithm, and the power gun. So you have more output available, both a standby, a full load, 
In addition, we are trying to increase the reliability of the part, in particular with the gun that sustain easily. You can have a 380 volts input and the gun still survive. We have a 900 volt MOSFET. That is another option for worldwide application. Generally, we have the lowest component count in our power supply. And we use uh, over voltage, over temperature, all this protection to make uh, reliable the power supply. And the bridge switch is this family that increases efficiency for uh, the motor. It's uh, the ideal solution for single phase motor or multi phase motor. You have the lowest component count versus uh, other competitors and have hardware protection with all information that the design can get from the chip communicate with MCU and take the right decision to avoid the failure of the system. Excellent. Well, Silvestro, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Okay, great. Thanks. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Power Integrations. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.